In this video, we will cover the series Avatar The Last Airbender from beginning to end in detail. This show has a total of three books, Water, Earth, and Fire, with a total of 61 exciting episodes. But before we get to them, we have to answer some important questions. What is the Avatar spirit? How did humans gain the ability to bend elements? And what exactly is the reason behind the disappearance of the current Avatar? So, without further ado, let's find out. First, let's Let's get into the harmonic convergence. This is like a celestial grand gala that happens just once every 10,000 years. During this magical event, the spirit portals at Earth's north and south poles join forces, casting a gentle, glowing spirit aura around the Earth. During this time, two mighty spirits, Rava, the embodiment of light and serenity, and Vatu, the representation of darkness and chaos. He is the force of darkness and chaos. I am the force of light and peace. Engage in a timeless showdown. Their epic clash determines the course of our world until the next Harmonic Convergence. Before the Harmonic Convergence of 19,829 BG, which is the first known Harmonic Convergence, by the way, Vatu found a way to break the barriers between our human realm and the spirit world, allowing both humans and spirits to hop between worlds. Since the beginning of time, we have battled over the fate of this world. And for the past 10,000 years, I have kept darkness under control. However, as the harmonic convergence rolled in, Rava stepped up and managed to keep Vatu in check until the next time. Quite the cosmic tale, isn't it? Nevertheless, the freed spirits found themselves wandering in the wild. In response, humans sought refuge on the protective shells of lion turtles, constructing cities to shield themselves from the perils of the spirit wilds. Whenever they ventured into the wilderness to gather supplies, the lion turtles bestowed upon them the ability to manipulate the elements. These powers were dutifully returned to the lion turtles upon the hunter's safe return, until that is, someone decided to keep them all to themselves. Humans, am I right? Eventually, the majority of the cities lost contact and knowledge of each other's existence and developed unique cultures. Several years later, a young man named Juan entered the world. Juan was a bit of a free spirit right from the start, yearning to make a mark on the world. One day, an opportunity arose. In the city, a group of hunters readied themselves for an expedition into the spirit wilds to gather food. Knowing the local lion turtle would bestow upon them the gift of fire to shield them against unruly spirits, Juan eagerly volunteered. Afterward, Juan returned to the city without relinquishing his newfound power and showcased it to his friends, Yao and Joya, in their treehouse. They warned him about the city's rules against bringing elemental powers inside, but Juan believed they could use them to bring about change. However, he was caught and presented before the lion turtle. Remarkably, Juan managed to persuade the giant creature to let him retain his fire power to survive in the wilds, as he was about to face banishment. While wandering the spirit, Spirit Wilds, Juan befriended spirits and mastered the dancing dragon form, enhancing his firebending skills. He became a protector of spirit grounds and left with his cat deer Mula to explore the world and find other lion turtle cities. Along his journey, Juan encountered a fierce battle between Rava and Vatu and inadvertently separated them, releasing Vatu into the world. In an effort to make amends for his misstep, Juan made a firm decision to become a master of all four bending arts, intending to assist Rava in the upcoming battle by offering himself as a host for the Light Spirit. Juan would train for the next 10,000 years until the next Harmonic Convergence. During his battle against Vatu, Juan managed to confine the spirit within an elemental sphere and seal him within the Tree of Time. This act involved a permanent fusion of his spirit with Rava, giving birth to the Avatar spirit in the process. And thus, Juan became the first Avatar, the master of all four elements. Juan then guided the spirits from the physical world into the spirit world and sealed both spirit portals, effectively closing the book on this tumultuous chapter in history. With the arrival of the Avatar, the Lion Turtles reached a collective decision that their role as guardians Guardians of Humanity had come to an end, and they resolved to cease bestowing any further bending abilities upon individuals. As humanity departed from the cities built
built on the lion turtles, they inevitably encountered one another. These diverse groups of people soon found themselves entangled in conflicts and wars. Juan stepped in to mediate and preserve harmony among them. Unfortunately, the violent clashes persisted throughout his lifetime and well beyond. When Juan passed away, the Avatar spirit promised him that the Avatar would be reincarnated till the end of time. And thus began what we call the Avatar Cycle. Now, during this era of war between humans, the Avatar would continue to be reincarnated again and again. In the meantime, people started learning to bend on their own. The waterbenders were taught by the moon and the ocean, the earthbenders were taught by the great badger moles, the firebenders learned to bend fire from the dragons themselves, and lastly, the airbenders were taught by the flying bison. Eventually, humans were divided into four nations of water, earth, fire, and air kingdoms. The water kingdom split into the north and the south pole, the firebenders came together to create the fire nation, earthbenders had a kingdom all to their own, and the airbenders decided to live in four temples in each direction on the map. Several cycles later, Avatar Kyoshi enjoyed a remarkably long life of 230 years, before passing the torch to the next avatar, Roku of the Fire Nation. Now, Roku had this lifelong buddy turned rival named Sozin, and their values were like night and day. Roku was all about world peace, while Sozin had grand dreams of world domination and wanted to militarize the Fire Nation. So, while Roku embarked on his global training tour, Sozin was busy turning his nation into a military powerhouse. When he returned to the Fire Nation, Sozin, now the Fire Lord, had some not-so-friendly ambitions of spreading Fire Nation influence and creating an empire. They had a heart-to-heart -heart at Roku's wedding, but Sozin's dreams were just a bit too ambitious for Roku's taste, who just wanted everyone to get along and play nice. And thus began the drama that would keep us entertained for a long time. In our hands is the most successful empire in history. It's time we expanded it. The Four Nations are meant to be just that. Four. Roku, you haven't even stopped to consider the possibilities. There are no possibilities. This is the last I want to hear about this. Many years later, Roku discovered that Sozin had defied his request and expanded the Fire Nation into the Earth Kingdom, leading to a confrontation at the Royal Palace. Their heated exchange turned into a duel and ended with Roku destroying the palace, sparing Sozin's life as a gesture of their past friendship. 25 years later, with no contact between them, Roku's island was ravaged by a massive volcanic eruption. He saved his fellow villagers, but failed to stop the eruption, and Sozin arrived to assist. However, when toxic gas overwhelmed Roku, Sozin abandoned him, prioritizing his ambitions for the Fire Nation. As the volcanic flow approached, Roku's loyal dragon, Fang, curled around him and they perished together. This moment marked the end of Roku's life and the birth of the next avatar, Aang among the Air Nomads. Aang was a fast learner, mastering airbending by the age of 10, which led him to receiving his distinctive airbending tattoos. At the age of 12, four years earlier than usual, Aang was confirmed as the Avatar due to growing fears of an impending war. This revelation was overwhelming for the young Aang, and Gaiatso, one of his teachers, who advocated for allowing him to have a normal childhood outside of Avatar duties. However, the monks believed the risk of an imminent war was just too great, so they decided to send Aang to the Eastern Air Temple for further training. Unable to cope with this decision and confused about his destiny, Aang fled the Southern Air Temple with his loyal flying bison, Appa. While caught in a storm and pulled underwater, Aang entered the powerful Avatar state and encased himself in ice near the South Pole, where he remained suspended for 100 years. Following that, Fire Lord Sozin instigated the catastrophic Hundred Year War, employing the destructive power of Sozin's Comet to launch a genocidal assault on the peaceful Air Nomads in a ruthless attempt to eradicate the Avatar. This merciless onslaught resulted in the total obliteration of the Air Nomads, with Aang being the sole survivor, having been encased in ice. Concurrently, the Fire Nation aggressively expanded its campaign, conquering vast territories within the Earth Kingdom and launching assaults on the water tribes. 
Over the course of a century, the Fire Nation's imperialistic ambitions would bring untold suffering to the world. A hundred years passed, and with no avatar to bring balance to power, the current Fire Lord Ozai continued the tyranny of his ancestors. Ozai also had a son named Prince Zuko, who appeared much more humane than his father. When Zuko challenged one of the general's decisions to use some warriors as bait, he was forced to face his own father in a battle to prove his worth. He he refused to fight and begged for mercy, prompting his father to scar his face and banish him. Zuko was tasked with capturing the missing avatar to regain his honor and place in the Fire Kingdom. Now accompanied by his uncle Iroh, he roams the world to make his old man proud. Alright, so now we're finally here. Katara and Sokka, siblings from the Southern Water Tribe, discover Aang frozen in an iceberg for a century. Aang, the avatar and the last of the air nomads, has no knowledge knowledge of the century-long war waged by the Fire Nation, and he's eager to explore and play. Katara, the last waterbender of her tribe, agrees to teach him waterbending in exchange for his help in finding a waterbending master at the Northern Water Tribe. While Katara and Aang bond during their adventures, Prince Zuko discovers the light signal that Aang inadvertently triggered, signaling that the Avatar had been found. Aang and Katara accidentally alert the Fire Nation to their presence, leading to a heated argument where Sokka banishes Aang from the Southern Water Tribe, causing Katara to stay behind. However, when Zuko's ship arrives, Aang returns to help, and his true identity as the Avatar is revealed. Aang is captured, but later escapes, leading to a fierce battle on the ship. In a moment of desperation, Aang enters the Avatar state and uses waterbending to defeat Zuko and his crew. Aang, Katara, and Sokka escape on Appa, and Zuko vows to pursue them. As they fly to the Northern Water tribe, Katara encourages Aang to embrace his role as the Avatar and master all the bending arts, starting with water bending. Aang doesn't believe that he is the last of his kind, so he, Katara, and Sokka visit the Southern Air Temple, where Aang hopes to find answers about being the Avatar. Meanwhile, Zuko and Iroh arrive at Ketu Harbor, where they meet Commander Zhao and engage in a tense conversation. Aang discovers the tragic fate of his people and enters the Avatar state, while Katara and Sokka try to comfort him. Firebenders? They were here? <gasps> Meanwhile, Zuko challenges Zhao to an Agni Kai for the right to continue his search and emerges victorious, displaying unexpected restraint. In the end, Aang, Katara, and Sokka, along with their new companion Momo the Lemur, leave the Southern Air Temple on Appa, making the realization that Aang is the last of the airbenders. Aang, Katara, and Sokka visit Kaioshi Island, where they initially intend to ride giant tui fish, but encounter the dangerous Unagi instead. They're captured by the island's skilled female warriors, the Kaioshi warriors, who do not believe Aang's claim to be the Avatar and plan to sacrifice them to the Unagi. Aang escapes and reveals his airbending abilities, leading the villagers to celebrate his presence. Meanwhile, Sokka befriends Suki, the leader of the Kaioshi warriors, and undergoes a mm, transformation. Zuko learns of Aang's presence on Kaioshi Island and attacks, forcing Team Avatar to leave and draw Zuko away. Before he leaves, Aang ultimately manages to control the Unagi, saving the village from destruction. The gang arrives at Omashu, an Earth Kingdom city, where Aang excitedly introduces Katara and Sokka to the city's famous mail delivery system. Aang fondly reminisces about his past adventures, mentioning how he and his friend Boomy used to enjoy riding the mail system for fun a hundred years ago. The trio decides to give it a try themselves, but gets caught and ends up in some trouble. Surprisingly, Omashu's wise old king soon recognizes Aang as the Avatar and puts him through three challenging tests. After successfully completing these tests, Aang learns that the king is, in fact, his old friend Boomy. Possibilities. <laughs> Boomy, you're a mad genius. Oh, hey, it's good to see. 
who reveals Aang's ultimate destiny, to become the master of all four elements and take on the formidable Fire Lord Ozai. Aang, Katara, and Sokka set up camp near a quaint Earth Kingdom town under Fire Nation control, where practicing earthbending is strictly prohibited. Katara's compassionate nature leads her to persuade a young earthbender named Haru to use his earthbending abilities to save an elderly man's life. Ultimately, this heroic act lands Haru behind bars. In a daring move, Katara hatches a plan to get herself arrested with the aim of freeing Haru. While imprisoned, she sparks a spirit of rebellion among the inmates, ultimately leading to their own liberation. But after the dust settles, Katara realizes with a sinking feeling that she has lost her mother's cherished necklace, which she had left behind at the prison. Unbeknownst to her, the necklace is discovered and taken by the relentless pursuer Zuko. Team Avatar stumbles upon an Earth Kingdom village plagued by nightly attacks from a fearsome spirit named Hei Bai. When Aang attempts to reason with the spirit, things take a bizarre turn as it kidnaps Sokka, leaving Aang with no choice but to go after his friend. In a surprising twist, Aang accidentally finds himself in the spirit world where he receives a message from his previous incarnation, Avatar Roku. Upon his return, Aang uses his newfound knowledge to soothe the rampaging beast and restore tranquility to the troubled village. Meanwhile, Iroh faces capture by the Earth Kingdom, who seeks to prosecute him for the past war crimes. This predicament prompts Zuko to momentarily halt his relentless pursuit of the Avatar and free his uncle from captivity. Aang embarks on a journey to the Fire Temple during the Winter Solstice to seek guidance from Avatar Roku. However, his path is fraught with danger as Zuko relentlessly pursues him, and a Fire Nation blockade, led by the relentless Zhao, attempts to thwart their progress. Despite these challenges, they manage to elude capture. Upon reaching the temple, Aang receives a shocking revelation. The five Fire Sages responsible for tending to the temple are no longer allies of the Avatar. We are the Fire Sages. Guardians of the Temple of the Avatar. Great! I am the Avatar. We know. Fortunately, one loyal sage named Xu aids Aang in reaching the sanctuary where he can commune with the past avatar. Roku imparts a crucial message, revealing the significance of Sozin's comet, which initially empowered the Fire Nation to initiate the century-long war and will soon return to grant them the power to potentially end it. After returning, Aang's determination shines through as he confronts Zhao, Zuko, and the sages, tapping into the spirit of Roku to destroy the temple and assert his will. Continuing their journey, Katara takes on the role of Aang's waterbending instructor, but becomes frustrated as he quickly surpasses her skills. Their journey leads them to a nearby town where they stumble upon a valuable waterbending scroll peddled by pirates. Katara, driven by her desire to catch up to Aang, swipes the scroll, sparking a frenzied pursuit by the pirates. Amid the thrilling chase, Zuko and enters the scene and strikes a crafty deal with the pirates. He'll retrieve the scroll for them in exchange for Aang. Later, Zuko captures Katara while the pirates apprehend Aang and Sokka. Chaos erupts when the pirates realize Aang's avatar status, triggering a fierce clash between Zuko's crew and the pirates. Amidst the chaos, our resourceful group makes a daring escape, clutching the prized scroll as they narrowly elude capture by their adversaries. Zhao ascends to the rank of Admiral and recruits the formidable Yuyan Archers, a group of skilled professional archers. Meanwhile, Sokka and Katara fall ill due to their earlier exposure to a storm, prompting Aang to embark on a quest to find a cure from a knowledgeable herbalist. However, during his mission, Aang is captured by the Yuyan Archers and subsequently imprisoned by Zhao. A mysterious warrior donning a blue mask comes to Aang's rescue, and together they manage to escape. To Aang's astonishment, he discovers that the warrior is none other than Zuko.
A glimmer of hope for a friendship sparks in Aang's mind, but Zuko eventually attacks him. Aang narrowly escapes and returns to heal his ailing friends, leaving the possibility of friendship with Zuko hanging in the balance. Katara and Sokka reunite with Bato, an old friend from their Southern Water Tribe days. Bato suggests they embark on a quest to find their long-missing father, sparking fear in Aang that his friends might choose to leave him behind. In an attempt to shield himself from this possibility, Aang intercepts a message meant for Sokka and Katara from their father and keeps it hidden. However, the truth eventually comes out, leaving his friends feeling betrayed and upset. Meanwhile, Zuko recruits the services of a formidable bounty hunter named June in his relentless pursuit of the Avatar. After a heated confrontation, Aang prevails against Zuko and retrieves Katara's cherished necklace, returning it to her. In a heartfelt moment, Katara and Sokka reaffirm their unwavering commitment to Aang, recognizing him as a vital part of their family and cementing their bond as a team. Following an accidental revelation of his avatar status during a festival, Aang is brought before Jiang, a firebending master who had disavowed the Fire Nation. Initially resistant to teach Aang firebending, Jiang eventually relents after a vision of Avatar Roku persuades him. However, during Aang's training, a mishap leads to Katara getting burned. Despite her ability to heal herself using her newfound powers, Aang swears off firebending forever, haunted by the accident. Their respite is short-lived as Zhao tracks them down and launches an attack. Remembering Jiang's teachings about the importance of self-restraint, Aang realizes that Zhao lacks this trait and cunningly manipulates him into unwittingly destroying his own fleet, securing a hard-fought victory. The group finally reaches the Northern Water Tribe, where they are greeted with warm hospitality. The tribe's chief throws a grand celebration in honor of the Avatar's arrival at the North Pole. During this time, Sokka crosses paths with Princess Yue and is smitten with her. Aang and Katara are eager to learn waterbending and seek out a master named Paku. But their hopes are dashed when Paku, bound by traditional and sexist customs, refuses to teach Katara. Aang secretly attempts to instruct Katara, but their clandestine efforts are discovered, leading to Aang's dismissal as Paku's student. Katara, determined to prove herself, challenges Paku, though she ultimately loses. However, her lineage is revealed, and she is the granddaughter of a woman that Paku once loved. This revelation prompts Paku to agree to teach both Katara and Aang. Meanwhile, Admiral Zhao employs pirates to assassinate Zuko, but Zuko manages to survive and covertly boards Zhao's lead ship as Zhao prepares for an attack on the North Pole. As the Fire Nation's massive armada prepares to launch a dawn attack on the Northern Water Tribe, the tribe readies its defenses, and Sokka steps up to join the warriors. Inspired by Princess Yue's explanation, that she can no longer communicate with him. Under the leadership of Admiral Zhao, the Fire Nation forces engage in an all-day battle against the Water Tribe, while Zuko embarks on a solo mission to infiltrate the tribe and capture Aang. Meanwhile, Aang decides to journey into the spirit world to seek wisdom from the moon and the ocean spirits, but just as his spirit departs, Zuko seizes the opportunity to kidnap his physical body, setting the stage for a dramatic showdown with high stakes. With Aang captured and Zuko struggling to find refuge in the icy expanse of the North Pole, Sokka, Katara, and Princess Yue launch a perilous search and rescue mission, guided by Aang's returning spirit. They succeed in locating Aang and bringing him back to the spirit oasis, but they arrive too late to prevent the dire consequences of Admiral Zhao's actions. He slays the mortal form of the moon spirit, causing the moon to vanish and robbing all water benders of their bending abilities. Fueled by anger and determination, Aang merges with the ocean spirit, unleashing devastating retribution upon the entire Fire Nation armada. Amidst this chaos, Princess Yue sacrifices herself to restore the moon spirit to life bringing the moon back to the sky. La, the ocean spirit, releases Aang, but not before ambushing and claiming Admiral Zhao. In the aftermath of this cataclysmic battle, Team Avatar presses on, Zuko temporarily suspends his pursuit of the Avatar, and in the Fire Nation, Ozai assigns a special task to his daughter Azula, setting the stage for further action.
Aang and his friends seek refuge at an Earth Kingdom outpost after their journey from the North Pole, planning to reach Omashu for Aang's earthbending training. However, General Fung suggests an audacious plan to trigger the Avatar state and end the war using a fake death scenario involving Katara. Aang's enraged response nearly levels the outpost, leading the group to proceed to Omashu on their own. Meanwhile, Zuko and his uncle are deceived by Zuko's sister Azula, who claims to bring a message from the Fire Lord, but intends to imprison them. They narrowly escape her clutches, setting the stage for a gripping family reunion. Aang, Katara, and Sokka infiltrate the occupied city of Omashu to rescue their friend King Boomy. Disguised as six citizens with pentapox, they are pursued by Azula, Tai Li, and Mai who plan to capture the Avatar. The exchange between Boomy and the infant son of the city's governor goes awry when Azula realizes Aang's identity. Aang and Boomy escape, and Boomy imparts wisdom about neutral Jing to Aang before leaving, and Azula takes control of the city and renames it New Ozai. The gang returns the kidnapped infant, Tom Tom, to his grateful parents and departs, while Azula and her team set their sights on capturing the Avatar. In his quest for an earthbending teacher, Aang stumbles upon an earthbending tournament where he encounters a remarkably skilled, blind earthbender named Toph. However, Toph's overprotective parents are unwilling to allow her to become Aang's instructor, despite her exceptional abilities. Aang's fortunes take a turn when he's abducted, and it's Toph who comes to his rescue. Unable to tolerate her constrained life any longer, Toph decides to run away from home and join Aang's gang, thus becoming his tutor. Her parents parents happen to think she was kidnapped though, so they send some skilled men on her trail. Aang embarks on his earthbending training with Toph, but struggles with the unfamiliar and challenging earth element, which stands in stark contrast to his native airbending. Meanwhile, Sokka's day takes a dramatic turn when he becomes trapped in a hole and spends hours in captivity. Concerned for Sokka's safety, the group launches a frantic search for him. It's Aang who ultimately locates Sokka and has to rescue him from the clutches of a menace saber-tooth moose lion. Toph seizes the opportunity to demonstrate that Aang does in fact possess the requisite attitude and mindset necessary for mastering earthbending. Meanwhile, Iroh resumes his firebending instruction with Zuko, teaching him the art of redirecting lightning as part of his efforts to better prepare Zuko for future confrontations, particularly with Azula. While seeking refuge at a desert oasis, the group crosses paths with a knowledgeable professor who shares the existence of a hidden library in the desert presided over by a spirit. Inside this remarkable library, Sokka learns about an impending solar eclipse that will severely impede the firebender's abilities and give them a chance to end the war. However, the guardian spirit of the library refuses to permit them to depart with this invaluable knowledge and submerges the library into the unforgiving sands of the desert. The group manages to narrowly escape the sinking library, but Appa is seized by sandbenders during their absence. Stranded in the harsh desert and rendered helpless without their beloved Appa, the team faces dire circumstances. Meanwhile, Iroh and Zuka reach the Misty Palms Oasis, where they're identified from a wanted poster by Jin Fu and Master Yu, who had been hired by Toph's father to locate her. Intent on capturing the pair for the reward, the two bounty hunters soon find themselves facing unexpected opposition from a secret society that aids Iroh and Zuka. Zuko. Meanwhile, Aang tracks down the sandbenders responsible for Appa's abduction and discovers that Appa had been traded to a merchant in Ba Sing Se. Overwhelmed by anger, Aang enters the Avatar state, teetering on the edge of unleashing destructive power upon the sandbenders. It's Katara who ultimately manages to calm him down and prevent catastrophic consequences. The group, now out of the desert, reunites with Suki and assists a family in crossing the treacherous surface serpent's pass, warding off a giant serpent attack in the process. Meanwhile, Zuko and Iroh, on their journey to start anew in Ba Sing Se, encounter Jet and the Freedom Fighters, forming an unexpected connection. Upon
Upon reaching Ba Sing Se, they discover the imminent threat of a massive Fire Nation drill aimed at breaching the city's walls, setting the stage for impending danger. Following their harrowing passage through the Serpent's Pass, Aang's determination to locate his missing bison Appa drives the group towards Ba Sing Se. On their way, they stumble upon a menacing Fire Nation drill closing in on the city, poised to breach its protective walls. With quick thinking and teamwork, Aang and his companions infiltrate the drill and successfully thwart its destructive mission from within. Meanwhile, Jet attempts to enlist Zuko into the ranks of the Freedom Fighters, but his efforts take a surprising turn when he discovers Zuko and Iroh's true identity as firebenders, adding a layer of complexity to their interactions. Meanwhile, Appa's ordeal continues as he remains in the clutches of the Sandbenders, ultimately finding himself in the cruel hands of a Fire Nation circus trainer who subjects him to mistreatment. However, a glimmer of hope emerges when a kind-hearted young boy assists Appa in escaping his captors. In a twist of fate, Appa is thrust into an unwilling battle with a formidable porcupine, emerging victorious but gravely wounded in the process. His path then crosses with Suki and the Kaioshi warriors, who provide care and nursing for his injuries. However, their respite is short-lived as they fall under attack by Azula and her formidable team, forcing Appa to flee once more. Seeking refuge, Appa returns to his childhood home at the Eastern Air Temple, where he encounters a mysterious guru. The guru imparts a cryptic message, instructing Appa to seek out Aang and Ba Sing Se. However, upon his arrival in the city, Appa falls prey to the manipulative Long Feng, who captures him using a bison whistle eerily similar to Aang's. Fed up with the oppressive rules of Ba Sing Se, the group decides to defy the city's regulations in their relentless pursuit of Appa. During their efforts, they cross paths with Jet once more, only to discover that he's been brainwashed by the Dai Li. Along the way, they encounter Smellerby and Longshot and piece together the shocking truth about Jet's plight. The gang then sets their sights on Lake Laogai in the hopes of locating Appa, but instead confronts Long Feng, who deals a fatal blow to Jet. On another front, Zuko locates Appa and realizes that Aang is within the city. With guidance from his uncle, Zuko makes a momentous decision to release the Sky Bison and shed his blue spirit identity for good. Following an intense showdown on the surface, Aang and Appa are finally reunited, marking a pivotal moment in their ongoing quest. Determined to reveal the truth about the Hundred Year War, the group stages a daring break-in at the Earth King's Palace, determined to expose the secrets that the Dai Li has kept hidden. After a persuasive effort, including the presentation of the demolished Fire Nation drill, they manage to convince the Earth King of the war's existence. As a result, Long Feng is arrested for his treacherous actions. Meanwhile, Zuko falls victim to a debilitating illness, referred to by Iroh as a metamorphosis brought on by the conflict between his conflicting destinies, plagued by haunting nightmares. Adding to the city's growing turmoil, Azula and her cunning friends discuss as the Kaioshi warriors, successfully infiltrate Ba Sing Se, setting the stage for further deception and intrigue. As the group temporarily disperses after recovering confiscated letters from the Dai Li, Aang's path leads him to Guru Pathak, who imparts crucial wisdom about mastering the Avatar state through the unlocking of chakras. Meanwhile, Sokka experiences a long-awaited reunion with his father after years of separation, and Toph's world takes a tumultuous turn when she's captured by Jin Fu and Master Yu, who transport her to her parents' estate. Through sheer ingenuity, Toph manages to escape by discovering the art of metal bending. Simultaneously, Azula hatches a sinister plan in cahoots with Long Feng to usurp the Earth Kingdom's authority, while Katara finds herself ensnared by the cunning machinations of their adversaries. Aang, tormented by a vision of Katara in peril, abandons his training prematurely to rescuer, defying Guru Pathik's counsel and embarking on a high-stakes mission to save his friend. Chaos ensues in Ba Sing Se as Azula takes control of the Dai Li, effectively 
effectively seizing power in the Earth Kingdom's capital. After learning that Katara and Zuko are imprisoned in the secret crystal catacombs, Aang and Iroh attempt a rescue mission. However, Zuko unexpectedly joins Azula's side in the midst of a battle against Aang and Katara. The fight intensifies, leading to Aang's seemingly fatal injury, but Katara revives him using spirit oasis water. Iroh is held prisoner for aiding their escape, and Aang is now unable to tap into the Avatar state due to his temporary death in that form. Aang regains consciousness to find himself seriously injured aboard a stolen Fire Nation vessel alongside his companions. He's taken aback and disheartened to learn that the world now thinks he perished. Zuko and Azula hailed as heroes return home with Fire Lord Ozai commending his son for supposedly defeating Aang. Nevertheless, Zuko privately suspects that Aang might have survived and hires an assassin. After much convincing, Aang reluctantly decides to maintain his existence existence as a hidden secret. As they enter the Fire Nation, Aang and his friends adopt the attire of the locals to blend in seamlessly among the populace. Aang conceals his distinctive airbender tattoos beneath a headband. However, when he inadvertently dons a Fire Nation school uniform and is accused of truancy, Aang finds himself transported to a Fire Nation school. Embracing the opportunity to interact as an ordinary child and recognizing the importance of understanding the Fire Nation, he decides to enroll in the school. Later, he orchestrates a lively dance party for the students, who are typically bound by strict discipline and lacking in self-expression. When the school authorities catch wind of the event, the students rally to aid Aang and his friends in their escape. Meanwhile, Zuko hires an assassin in his relentless pursuit of Aang. Following Team Avatar's heroic efforts to save a town from a catastrophic meteorite impact, Sokka grapples with feelings of inadequacy as the sole non bender in the group. In a quest to enhance his warrior skills, he seeks out the tutelage of a swordmaster named Piondao. Under Piondao's guidance, Sokka not only refines his combat abilities, but also crafts his own sword from the very meteorite that once threatened the town. However, when Sokka reveals his true origin from the Southern Water Tribe to Piondao, they engage in a duel, with Sokka ultimately proving his growth and determination. Piondao bestows Shows upon him the black sword and a pie show tile with the white lotus symbol, hinting at a secret society. The episode also showcases Iroh's remarkable physical transformation as he continues his training in prison, while the rest of Team Avatar, missing Sokka, learns to appreciate his unique contributions to the group. On the day of the solar eclipse, the long awaited invasion of the Fire Nation capital commences. Hakoda, Katara, and Sokka's father lead a diverse and skilled team of allies, including warriors, benders, and various individuals they've encountered during their travels. Their mission is to infiltrate the Fire Nation capital and confront Fire Lord Ozai, taking advantage of the Eclipse, which will render all firebenders powerless. The invasion force overcomes numerous security obstacles and faces formidable challenges, but manages to make its way to the Fire Lord's palace just as the Eclipse begins. To their surprise and disappointment, they find the palace empty, with no sign of Fire Lord Ozai or his inner circle. As Sokka, Toph, and Aang desperately try to locate Fire Lord Ozai during the solar eclipse, Azula thwarts their efforts, engaging them in a heated battle that eats away precious time. Tragically, the eclipse comes to an end before they can find the Fire Lord, and their plan to defeat him during his moment of vulnerability ultimately fails. Meanwhile, Zuko summons the courage to confront his father about his mother's relation with Avatar Roku and declares his intention to join Aang in stopping him. I'm going to join the Avatar, and I'm going to help him defeat you. Really? In response, Ozai attempts to eliminate his son with a deadly bolt of lightning, but Zuko redirects it and narrowly escapes. In the midst of the chaos, Iroh manages to free himself from prison and vanishes into the world. Where's my uncle? He's gone. He busted himself out. I've never seen anything like it. He was like a one-man army.
The invasion force is captured by the Fire Nation, forcing Aang, Katara, Sokka, and Toph to escape on Appa, seeking refuge at the Western Air Temple. Zuko pursues them in an air balloon, torn between his loyalty to the Fire Nation and his newfound desire to assist Aang in defeating his own father. Tracking Aang and his companions to the Western Air Temple, Zuko is determined to earn their trust and join their group. He goes to great lengths to demonstrate his changed character and commitment to the path of good Goodness. Despite his initial attempts to gain their acceptance, it's only when Zuko plays a crucial role in saving them from the deadly Combustion Man, the same assassin he himself hired, that he finally garners their trust and is invited to become Aang's firebending instructor. However, Katara remains cautiously skeptical about Zuko's transformation and keeps a watchful eye, warning him of the dire consequences should he betray their newfound trust. In his efforts to teach Aang the art of firebending, Zuko realizes that his own firebending abilities have significantly diminished. Determined to find a solution, he embarks on a journey with Aang to explore the ancient origins of firebending at the long-lost Sun Warrior Temples. During their quest, Zuko confides in Aang about the dark history of his great-grandfather Sozin, who plays a pivotal role in causing the extinction of the original firebenders, the dragons. To their astonishment, they discover that the Sun Warrior culture has survived, leading them to the enigmatic firebending masters, later unveiled as the last remaining dragons in the world, Ran and Shaw. Through their teachings, Zuko's firebending powers are rekindled, and Aang undergoes a profound transformation, shedding his fear and hatred of firebending as he learns its true essence from the ancient and wise creatures. As Aang grapples with the moral dilemma of how to defeat Fire Lord Ozai without taking his life, his friends pressure him to consider the lethal option. However, Aang remains committed to his non-lethal beliefs. During his sleep, he is inexplicably drawn to a mysterious island that has suddenly emerged in the sea. Concerned for his whereabouts, his friends enlist the help of June, the bounty hunter, to locate him. Meanwhile, Fire Lord Ozai takes on the title of Phoenix King, and Aang awakens on the enigmatic island now floating in the middle of the sea. On the mysterious island, Aang seeks counsel from his past lives, who urge him to consider ending Fire Lord Ozai's life. It is revealed that the the island itself is a wise lion turtle that imparts ancient wisdom to Aang, introducing him to the forgotten art of energy bending. Meanwhile, unable to locate the Avatar, Zuko shifts his focus towards finding his uncle, and Team Avatar encounters the Order of the White Lotus, led by none other than Iroh. Reuniting with Iroh, the group decides to embark on separate paths to aid in stopping the Fire Nation. As Sozin's comet approaches, Phoenix King Ozai prepares prepares to unleash his devastating assault on the Earth Kingdom. As Azula's mental state continues to deteriorate in the lead-up to her coronation as Fire Lord, Zuko and Katara intervene in the ceremony. Azula challenges Zuko to an Agni Kai for the throne, where Zuko initially gains the upper hand, but is ultimately incapacitated after he takes a lightning strike intended for Katara. Meanwhile, Aang confronts Ozai, but refuses to take the Fire Lord's life, leading to a fierce battle where Aang struggles against Ozai's relentless attacks. Sokka, Toph, and Suki embark on a mission to stop the airship fleet, but become separated during the assault. Simultaneously, the Order of the White Lotus fights to liberate Ba Sing Se from the Fire Nation's control. Ozai unintentionally triggers Aang's chakra, leading him to enter the powerful Avatar state. The Order of the White Lotus succeeds in liberating Ba Sing Se, while Sokka and Toph successfully disable all the airships. Katara engages Azula in combat and eventually defeats her, later using her waterbending to heal Zuko's injuries. In the Avatar state, Aang easily overpowers Ozai, but remains steadfast in his refusal to take the Fire Lord's life. Instead, he employs energy bending, an ancient bending art, to strip Ozai of his firebending abilities, upholding his principles and defeating the Phoenix King without ending his life. I took away your firebending. You can't use it to hurt or threaten anyone else ever again. Newly appointed Fire Lord Zuko officially declares the end of the war. Today, this war is finally over. A hundred years of fighting has left the world scarred and divided.
and Aang and his friends celebrate their victory together. Later, Aang and Katara finally share a heartfelt and romantic kiss on the balcony as the series comes to a close.